Okay, Pit Posse bike shoe. Um, still love them. Been using them for a couple years now. Super easy, bike in, bike out. No tie downs, no fork savers. Um, bikes don't fall over, they're great. My buddy, the only issue, and there's not an issue actually, what I'd like to do though in my trailer, in my enclosed trailer, is to be able to remove them, um, take them out easily uh, if I want to haul stuff in it besides dirt bikes. I know that's quite a concept that you'd actually haul something besides dirt bikes, but um, like why not haul a couch? My buddy just borrowed my trailer to haul some stuff back from Texas and um, we pulled them out. And uh, <clears throat> it's a pain in the butt to have the bolts go on the top and put a nut underneath the trailer by yourself. And I did, I installed all six of these things by myself. And it took a while, it took hours uh, to put a wrench on top, to hold it down, to get underneath, socket, it, or the wrench would pop off. I'd have to come up and put it on again, blah, blah, blah. It was ridiculous. So here's what it looked like before. <clears throat> Let me see if I can adjust this so this will come out on the camera. Hopefully you can see everything, what I'm doing here. Um, bolt through the top, right? That makes sense. Uh, washer from the bottom, nut on the bottom, and the floorboard of the trailer right here, okay? So it worked well. One issue I had was with these washers right here, you can see how it deformed them. And they're pretty thin, okay? So all of them were like that. They all crushed the wood and they all bent up inside. Um, but they, the, the racks never got loose. They never wobbled around. So I was happy with that. So what I wanted to do is try to engineer something that would allow me to just put a bolt in, have a captured nut underneath that stays on the trailer. That way I could just bring my electric impact, pull the bolts out, pull the bolts out and pull the rack off and have a flat surface and be done and walk away. And those nuts would stay on the bottom. Then when I want to go put these back in, just set them down, line them up, start hand threading them, and then just buzz them down and uh, have them installed again. So <clears throat> what I'm doing here is, uh, this is what I'm starting with. I'm using these pretty thick washers. I'm not sure why I ended up with something so big. I don't think this is necessary, but I bought them for something. I have a bunch of them. You can see I have a stack of them there and I have some more. So I'm going to use these and uh, I'm going to use this thinner washer here, or a uh, smaller washer here. It's uh, 5 sixteenths. I don't remember what si exact size these bolts are. These are grade 8 bolts. Um, and I'm using a, I was using a uh, lock washer on the, or lock nut on the bottom, a nylon lock nut. Okay, so my plan was to do this, and I should put this in upside down. Let's do it like this. Okay, now... What I'm going to do is weld this around here, weld the nut on, um, drill a couple holes here, and this is what the final product looks like right here. Okay, so this is still hot. No, it's cold off. Okay, good. So just kind of welded that inner washer on, welded the nut on. Um, that way this bolt goes through here. And then the idea is to have those two holes. We'll grab these here. Don't go anywhere. Just to have these two holes. So I can screw these to the bottom of the deck, to the bottom of the trailer like that, right? And then this will be attached to the bottom of the trailer all the time. Then I'll be able to drop this bolt through and hopefully this is coming out. Sorry if it's not. And that'll catch the threads right there. And that's what it'll look like. Now, obviously these screws are a little too long. That's not gonna work at all. But this, this uh, bottom part will be captured under the trailer. It'll be stuck there. And then I can just remove the bolt as I need to. So I've got, um, I'm going to go ahead and make, I don't, I'm not going to be able to use 18 of these um, because uh, even though I have six racks and it's three a piece, because a couple of these bolts actually go through the frame of the trailer, either the cross pieces and one I actually have going all the way through the main frame. And of course, that's the most solid uh, one in there. But um, I'm going to go ahead and make 18 just in case I screw up a couple. And uh, then for those others, I'm going to have to fabricate something a little bit smaller with a little smaller washer or something. Or maybe I'll cut one of these off. If I have, if it's too close to the frame, I'll cut it off like this, just with a chop saw or with a cutoff wheel or something. Okay, well, let's weld up a couple and see what they look like. Okay, now obviously I'm going to burn out the nylon lock part. It's going to catch on fire or smoke or something. 
Um, that's just the trade-off for welding these in. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is just, I don't care what this looks like, it doesn't have to look good, but um, I'm trying to leave my leave a little bit of space so I can drill holes and still leave uh, room. So I'm just trying to weld like, uh, I don't know how many degrees that is, but I'm trying to leave a space here and a space here, uh, like I did here and here, so that I can put, a, put my screws in and still have room for the head to fit without having to grind anything out. And then, also, of course, if you just start welding on one side, it'll warp up. So that's what I'm trying to do. Tack one side, tack the other side quickly so it'll keep it level. Same with the nut. Tack one side, tack the other side, keep it level, and then move on. Because I really don't want these crooked. Okay, I want to show you a mistake that I made that I wish I'd done differently now. Um, in the first part of the video, I was when I was welding these up, I was hanging these on the table with the bolt hanging through um, attached to the nut, uh, threaded into the nut a little ways. Um, to, and I was counting on that holding the nut straight and I tack one side and I quickly tack the other side, but most of them still uh, twisted from the heat. Um, from Even though I went from one side to the other, that first side I welded, um, it got hot and then it started shrinking and it tilted it. So <clears throat> they all came out a little bit crooked and so I had to pound on them right here to straighten them out, and it was kind of a pain. Um, what I wished I'd done, I made one more um, the other day, and what I did was I just clamped the washer and the nut um, between a clamp like this. And then I just reached in there with a the MIG welder, tacked on both sides, I mean on opposite sides, and then went to the other sides as well. So that worked a lot better. That kept the nut straight on the washer. And then the washer I just welded onto the bigger washer um, may not be necessary. Um, I just recommend getting a thicker washer so it doesn't deform easily or so it doesn't uh, crush easily also. Uh, this one's kind of thin. So I actually use this nut, this washer, and then a bigger washer, um, a real thick one that I welded this to. The hard part is keeping that nut centered over the little hole that you have in this washer because uh, there's not a lot of room. So what I did was I just traced the outside of the nut on the washer just to make sure it was square over the hole. And then when I clamped it, I could see the little lines and then I knew I was centered. Then just went ahead and tacked it. And then, and that worked perfectly. That bolt went in perfectly straight. Um, I didn't have to do any modification to it. So in the future, if I ever make these again or have to make more, I'm gonna make it like this, clamping it like this, not just hanging the bolt from the nut, hoping the bolt's weight will keep it straight because it sure didn't. Okay, let's go out and look at what it looks like under here. I got five of these in. I have one more to put in, but it's back there by the toolbox and one we don't use very much. So that's what it looks like. And uh, there's a couple like three quarter inch screws there uh, going up inside. And there's one, hopefully that's coming out. Um, this is the one that actually cut the frame before. And 
oh no, I didn't cut the frame here, but I ended up cutting one of these down, cutting some edges off with a, and then I ended up just tackling a, I put one screw in right there, I think, and then I ended up tack welding it. I can't remember where the screw is, I can't see it here. There it is right there. And then I ended up tack welding it, just stitch welding it. Doesn't need much. So here's three more for this one. Da -da 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 -da. And on this one, I had previously cut the frame. There's the two there. On this one, I had previously cut the frame and um, to put a washer and a nut here. So the frame was already cut, so I just went ahead and welded a nut to it. And that actually is very strong, very sturdy. And uh, you can see my screw there from the E-Track. Okay, and here's an example of when one of these was so crooked um, from welding it, uh, like I talked about, um, I could get one edge here with this hole against the wood and this edge was sticking up so high, you can see how high it's sticking up there. So I just wedged two or three washers in there and then ran the screw down. Looks like that screw could go down some more. And um, that holds it uh, where it's centered so that when you put the, drop the bolt in, it'll thread up straight, okay? There's the one you can kind of see right there that went all the way through the frame rail. Um, that took a little bit of fabricating. Um, because my uh, wiring goes down here, I have a big wire loom that's about this big around or a, a loom, a wiring, uh, a bunch of wires, a cable, I guess is what it is, but it's all wrapped in solid plastic on the outside. So what I did was I kind of drilled a bigger hole and then shoved it to the side. I welded on top of that uh, washer and nut combination. I welded on top of it a post about this big just to keep the uh, um, wire loom going by that's laying in the bottom of the frame that'll keep it away from my bolt when I drop it in. So that little piece of metal is just a little piece of square tubing that sticks up about this high. And um, that way the wire loom lays, or the wire lays beside it, the cable lays beside it. Then when I drop the bolt through, it just drops right into that uh, little square tube and then lines up with the hole right there. And um, yeah, so not the prettiest everywhere, but it is working. And uh, let's go see it work inside. So now, let's get some lights on here. Get this one on over here too. Okay, yeah, so these lights, I don't remember how long ago I made the video. These are the same Amazon lights that I've used. You can see every once in a while there's a bulb burned out here. Uh, it's really hard to look at these. And there's one there, there's one there. You know, every couple of feet or every foot or so there's a little LED burned out. In some places it's a long strip, there's nothing. But they still work well for the price we paid. Okay, so the whole idea is to be able to hopefully don't block too much light here. Okay, Ta -da. so that's 30 seconds for one of these. Um, drop it back in here, hopefully get it lined up. Now I'm going to start these by hand and just pull up on them just to make sure I'm engaging the threads and not cross-threading it because I think that's a distinct possibility, especially if one of these gets loose underneath, then I pull the bolt out and then it flops to the side or tips a little bit, then I could really cross there easily. Okay. Okay. Good. Now, one thing I learned about these, um, I had bought a couple from Rocky Mountain, a couple from, I, I, I guess, Pit Posse, I can't remember where I bought the original ones from. The manufacturer of them, as far as the holes, is a little bit different, okay? So when I went to put these in back in, <clears throat> they didn't line up with some of the holes. So I had to like switch them around and figure out which ones lined up with which holes because the hole spacing, especially between these two, was just a little bit, and it wasn't much, it was like maybe an eighth of an inch, but it was off enough that my holes that were perfectly drilled through the wood um, were off. And I didn't want a bunch of slop around there, so I wanted to keep that. So I just went ahead and switched them around until I figured out which ones they were. I'm gonna go ahead and number them um, from the front, like number one, two, three, four, five, and number six that I'll put in right here. So that when I take them out, I can put them back in easily and I know which order they go in, which ones fit where. So that's gonna be really nice. Uh, these bike uh, shoes uh, we went riding yesterday, had an excellent ride and um, bike shoes still work really well.